Well, welcome back. My name is Jim Kay. We're talking about how to get to know God intimately and the power of his resurrection. But in doing so, we've had to examine a lot of things from cover to cover in the Bible, all the way from Jesus' death, burial, resurrection, and redemption, and the unique attributes of God. And now we're talking about the moral attributes of God. We've talked about love. We've talked about how God is good. And we're talking about his mercy and his grace. And we've kind of been on mercy and grace for a number of sessions now. And now I left off last time talking about how we came out of Canada and how Tisha, uh, they couldn't find out what was wrong with her, ended up in my hometown of 1,200 and one doctor, country doctor, he took, it didn't take him five minutes, he said she had dramatic fever. And it moved from whatever to whatever to her heart or what have you, I forget how that went. And she ended up then being on what we call the Crippled Children's Society and she'd be on these drugs uh, the rest of her life and whatever. Well, then you talk about God's mercy and his grace. I, uh, I, I didn't know where to go. You know, what, what was God's plan for me? You know, well, I'm in the Army National Guard. And so decided that uh, in 1974, that I would, uh, I was now, because I'd gone to, oh, let's see, how did this work? Yeah. So, well, anyway... Uh, we decided I would go, I was a public information officer because I was in Canada, but they kept me active in the Army National Guard. I would have to come home, make up time and all that stuff for the drills. And so I decided, well, I'm just going to apply for a full-time technician job with the Army National Guard in the headquarters in Maine, in Bismarck, North Dakota. I'm overqualified for the position. I, I, so that I, we, uh, uh, we uh, went ahead and, um, uh, and uh, even put a money down for a, a home, uh, earnest money. And then I, I, did, I was public information officer, so I was sent to Fort Benjamin Harrison for 10 weeks, and I'd be right back. And, and while I was in Fort Benjamin Harrison, I get all the, my junk mail forwarded to me. And of course, uh, we'd gone to these conferences where they would take our name and put them on mailing addresses of different ministries, one of them being Kenneth Hagan. Well, I'd get his, uh, you know, in the charismatic movement, so, you know, our manual was pigs in the parlor, and you had to have a name for every demon and evil spirit, and if you were balding, you had a balding spirit. If you are falling asleep, you had a sleeping spirit. In a meeting, you had a sleeping spirit. <laughs> All this crazy stuff. <laughs> People really didn't have devils that we were trying to cast a devil out of, but they really, they didn't have a devil, but by the time we were done with them, we prepared them to receive a devil, I think. It was crazy. So I, I would just, but then I had this habit of, uh, if I get junk mail, you still got to page through it before you throw it away. And here was an ad for Rama Bible Training Center, and they were going to start it that fall. And it was just a little short ad in this, uh, I guess it would have been August. And I don't know, you know, I don't know anything about faith, so you got to have a backup plan. I was, I was sure I had the job with the Army National Guard in Bismarck. But you know, just in case, I wrote for an application. I don't even know if I got it. I, I don't know even know. I, I think I got one, filled it in. And I tell you, I was accepted immediately. I mean, this didn't take less than a month back and forth with everything. And little did I know that that was a charter class. I didn't know this was the first year of Rama. And, uh, but anyway, get back to North Dakota and guess what? I didn't get the job. Well, I then just, we just decided, well, we're going to go to the Bible school in Tulsa. My father never interfered with it in us, but this time he did say, Jim, don't you think it'd be time for, you know, just settle down and get a teaching job? Well, you know, because I graduated with a four-year degree. And I said, well, I, I uh, have only had one employer since I've been born again, and that's Jesus. So, and, and God told me to go to Tulsa to Rama. <laughs> I lied right to my teeth. I didn't know God's voice. I didn't even know how to be led by the Spirit. But we packed up all of our stuff and we moved to Tulsa to go to Bible school down there at Rama. And uh, that was the very first year, like I said. And uh, we then graduated from Rama. And uh, that was the mercy of God and the grace of God. I, if I'd have ended up in the military, I probably would have been back to drinking. But so far, I'm still sober, still practicing the 12 steps in AA. And, and all of that, you know, even though I'm born again and uh, in the Bible study and just drifting kind of from one 
extreme to the next, didn't know how to rightly divide the word of truth. But God's grace and his mercy, I was brought to Ramah. I was taught how to rightly divide the word of God. And that changed my whole life. And his grace, I received so much I did not deserve. Awesome teaching at Ramah, sitting under the feet of a mentor that ended up, you know, uh, living to be 85 years old, never been involved in scandal or false doctrine. What a, what a mentor to be under. And uh, so then I ended up graduating in 1975. We got there to the fall of 74 in those years. Ram was just one year. And we felt impressed up in our heart to, um, well, how God delivered us again, I should say. <laughs> While I'm in Bible school in December of 74, Rama, guess what? Now, I get a letter from, uh, I'm still part of the North Dakota Army National Guard making up my drills there in Oklahoma. And they contacted me and said, would you be interested in going on active duty for a couple of years? Uh, and of course, uh, I was now a captain in the military and, and going on active duty to prepare for the centennial for America. And, uh, and I guess it would have been the centennial in the words, what, 200 years or whatever. And, uh, wow, this is the answer to prayer with, as a captain with, uh, all this extra pay for, uh, being there in Washington, D.C. and all of that, uh, that's a pretty big money in those years, <laughs> and we could be debt-free. So we went ahead, and, and Kenneth Hagin's son, uh, uh, Kenneth W., was the dean of the Bible school, and I went to him, and I shared with him the opportunity that we had, and uh, that we could, you know, go there, get all of our bills paid in a year, and then we could come back to Ramah. And so here's where God's mercy came in, he says, well, have you, here, here's what you need to do. He said, to make sure that it's God. Said, you and Kathleen go home and you each take a piece of paper and you go in the separate part of the room and you get real quiet before God. And should we go to on active duty or should we stay at Ramah and find out which way your peace is going? Now, Kathleen enjoyed the military. I enjoyed the military. This looked like a real answer to prayer for sure. And we did as we were told. She got another part of the house I did. I don't know how long we were quiet. And then finally we got together and we laid our pieces of paper down and there it was. Both of us stay at Ramah. Don't go on active duty. See, and in the flesh, we, we wanted to go on active duty. And so we stayed. Now you talk about God's mercy. Again, we'd have been out of God's will if we'd have been on active duty. And who knows, I could have ended up drinking again or whatever, I don't know. But most importantly at all, we'd ended up out of God's will. So we stayed and we graduated in 1974, I did. Now, Kathleen played all the tapes at home. I'd bring cassette tapes home and she would play them uh, while we were at home. And of course, uh, in October of that year, I was home. She was out getting groceries or something and I was home all alone. I was just so excited about what I was learning. I was shouting and screaming, and all of a sudden I just knew to get quiet. And the presence of God filled that room, and I had the impression, strong impression in my heart that I was called into full-time ministry and that I'd start pastoring a small church to start with, and then eventually I'd be going into all the world and traveling and teaching, but you know, you'd have to be a pastor for 20 years first, you know, I got into the flesh. I shared that with her when I got home, when she got home, till we graduated from Ramah, and we ended up in a small church in Minnesota, Wilmer, Minnesota. And I, I believed that I would be, have a small church to start with so I'd have time to practice. <laughs> now remember, I'm born again in 72, filled with the Holy Spirit in 72, and graduated from Ramah in 74. That's only two years later, or 75 rather. That's only three years later, and now I'm going to pastor. That probably I shouldn't have because I was really uh, a baby Christian. But anyway, we tried out at the church. We, they said they'd pray for two weeks. They accepted uh, uh, um, and, and, and asked us then come back two weeks later and said that we'd like to have you as our pastor. And that's how we ended up in Minnesota then in 1975. And we've been in the ministry ever since. And uh, 
that's been what water you know 75 to 1920 that's uh, to 2020 i don't know that's 25 30, that's about 45 years in the ministry now see god's mercy and his grace i really don't deserve this oh i don't deserve this i'm so thankful 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 so anyway we've talked about his mercy and his grace well, may God be with you and bless you in everything you set your hands to do. And we'll see you in the next session as we continue to talk about the moral attributes of